Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so I'm here for a, a bit of an experimental video, um, where I am, uh, obviously behind the camera. Um, I'm here today to do a book talk on, uh, Lincoln, the biography of a writer by Fred Kaplan, which I've already mentioned a few times on my channel, but I want to do a, f a full video on of just my, my general thoughts on it. And, um, so, uh, this video is, you know, obviously different because I'm behind the camera, but also it'll be different because I actually have written up a little script for it. Um, you know, I'm not going to deliver it robotically. I'm going to, um, del del hopefully deliver it relatively naturalistically. Um, but nonetheless, I have prepared my thoughts ahead of time, uh, just because often with book talks like this, I get dissatisfied with, uh, with my ability to hit all the points that I wanted to hit in a, in one of these videos. Um, and this seemed like the easiest way to just make sure that that gets, gets accomplished. So anyway, without further ado, I will refer to, uh, I will uh, proceed to the book talk. Um, this was a buddy read with uh, Patrice Jones, who uh, is one of my longtime commenters. We had a great discussion on the subject. I feel like I learned a lot from the book and from our conversation. So um, that was a lot of fun. Um, uh, so. Uh, Lincoln, the biography of a writer, uh, was published in 2008. Uh, Fred Kaplan has, uh, written a number of literary biographies. Uh, there he is on the back cover. Uh, he's written, uh, biographies of, uh, Gore Vidal, Mark Twain, Henry James, and Charles Dickens. Um, and he's, uh, prof uh, Professor Emeritus of English at the City University of New York. Um, not sure that image is really focusing, is it? Um, there you go. There he is. Okay, um, uh, so this book, um, as the title would suggest, uh, approaches Abraham Lincoln, uh, as a writer. Um, as anyone who's read or had to memorize the Gettysburg Address knows, uh, Lincoln knew his way around an English sentence, uh, but what many people may not know, and what I didn't know coming into this, was that he also, uh, wrote prolifically his whole life, um, Starting as a child, he wrote uh, light verse and essays, uh, and later as uh, a state and national representative and as a president, of course, uh, he wrote speeches, and of course he also uh, wrote letters his whole life to uh, you know his friends and family. Um, uh, the Library of America actually publishes his complete speeches and writings in a box set of two uh, volumes that are about 800 pages each, uh, so his output was actually quite impressive. Um, uh, at one point, Fred Kaplan actually makes the point that uh, Lincoln was probably uh, our most literary president uh, in the United States. Um, the most, probably the most talented writer to be the president of the U.S., um, aside from John Quincy Adams and Thomas Jefferson. Um, but yeah, so uh, he was, uh, you know, steeped in writing in books his whole life. Um, so yeah, um, in this book, Kaplan obviously tries to document Lincoln's writing life, which is, of course, inextricably tied up with his uh, reading life. Uh, Lincoln grew up uh, first in Kentucky and later in Indiana and Illinois, uh, and the Bible would have been his first real exposure to literature. Uh, his family was deeply, re uh, deeply religious, um, a frontier family, uh, although he uh, actually uh, lost his faith later in life and uh, would rarely go to church as an adult, which would become sort of a sticking point for some uh, voters uh, in his political career. Um, it would be sort of a challenge that he would uh, periodically have to overcome. Uh, but he was uh, forced to leave school at 11 to help his father's farm, uh, but he uh, still read voraciously in his spare time. Um, he didn't have that much to read, aside from a couple of sort of generic anthologies that were in circulation at the time. Um, but what he did read, he, he loved deeply. Um, he, he soon found literary and life mentors in such writers as um, Aesop and Thomas Gray and Lord Byron, Robert Burns, and of course uh, William Shakespeare. Uh, he had uh, an incredible memory for much of what he read. Uh, often he would spontaneously recite entire pages-long poems that he loved uh, and soliloquies from Shakespeare uh, and would quote them verbatim in many of his speeches. Um, 
So he began writing uh, in school. He, his first writing uh, was an essay that he wrote in school on the subject of temperance, uh, of you know, abstaining from alcohol. Um, but his first um, attempt at writing outside of school was uh, a sort of light poem where he satirized this family that he believed had wronged his own family. Um, so he was sort of making fun of them in this, in this sort of light poem. Um, eventually, he uh, actually uh, picked up law textbooks and taught himself law and became a lawyer this way just by studying on his own uh, and this would be his primary professional profession for his most of his life um, he um, he uh, Kaplan always emphasizes that Lincoln didn't ever quite master the rudiments of law because he was self-taught but still just the fact that he was able to uh you know open law textbooks and even read a page of them without falling asleep is quite impressive um when he reached his 20s he um did something that most politicians well no politicians today do uh which is that he um embarked on a political career at a remarkably young age, around 24, um, and also wrote all of his own speeches. Right from the start, he wrote all of his own speeches and wrote them really well. Um, Lincoln uh, hated speaking spontaneously in front of crowds, uh, and he always wrote what he was going to say ahead of time, and then memorized it and delivered it as though it were sort of coming spontaneously, and he would sort of pepper his speech with uh, sort of jokes and uh, colloquial language and... Um, and personal anecdotes to sort of help help uh, facilitate that uh, sort of illusion, I guess. Um, Kaplan uh, always emphasizes that Lincoln believed the written word to be the supreme genius of the human mind. Uh, and as a bookish person myself, I'm inclined to agree, but um, we can talk about that in the comments. Uh, as Lincoln said in a speech uh, given at Illinois College in... Um, 1859, writing, the art of communicating thoughts to the mind through the eye is the great invention of the world, great in the astonishing range of analysis and combination which necessarily underlies the most crude and general conception of it, great, very great, in enabling us to converse with the dead, the absent, and the unborn, at all distances of time and of space, and great not only in its direct benefits, but the greatest help to all other inventions. Its utility may be conceived by the reflection that to it we owe everything which distinguishes us, us from savages. Take it from us and the Bible, all history, all science, all government, all commerce, and nearly all social intercourse go with it. Um, so if you'll forgive the reference to savages, it was a different age back then. Um, that is a very eloquent testament to just the power of the written word. Um, it always meant a lot to Lincoln what he said and how he said it and why he said it. Um, Kaplan is very good about including generous quotations like the one that I've just read you. Um, and, you know, there's ob an obvious, obviously a focus on his speeches because that's sort of the most important to his life. Um, but he also includes uh, a lot of his verse. Um, one piece of verse that I particularly liked uh, was um, this poem he wrote upon visiting his childhood home. It's, that's sort of a, a meditation on uh, death and mortality. Um, and uh, the stanza that I loved the most is the one right there with the star next to it. Uh, I hear the loved survivors tell how naught from death could save, till every sound appears a knell, and every spot a grave. Um, so yeah, pretty dark, but that, that's kind of, that's how I, I tend to be with my poetry taste. Um, and, uh, so I really like the commentary that Kaplan provides on each, uh, speech and, and poem. He gives a lot of context, a lot of analysis, sort of, uh, pointing out things to you that perhaps you didn't notice that were just rhetorical flourishes. Um, but I do feel like occasionally, very occasionally, Kaplan tries a bit too hard to offer commentary and ends up sounding a bit silly um, and almost perhaps a bit pretentious. Um, so as an example, uh, at one point he quotes from this uh, beautiful passage from uh, Lincoln's acceptance speech for the Republican nomination for the U.S. Senate in 1858. Um, and then after the speech, he feels the need uh, to say this about it. Um, the syntactical reversal of the sentence that begins, quote, of strange, discordant, and even hostile elements, 
the alliteration of four, formed, fought, and fire, and the distinctively original use of discordant and dissevered, make this mission statement the most distinctively powerful by any American president. And I, I, this, this piece of commentary to me just seemed really heavy-handed, like it really didn't need to be there. I think it, in cases like this, it would have been much better if Kaplan had just let Lincoln's own writing speak for itself, um, because I think it really did speak for itself in this case. So the passage that he's describing is right there above the first one, um, and uh, it says, We did this under the single impulse of resist resistance to a common danger, with every external circumstance against us of strange, discordant, and even hostile elements, we gathered from the four winds and formed and fought the battle through, under the constant hot fire of a disciplined, proud, and pampered en enemy. Did we brave all then to falter now? Now, when that same enemy is wavering, dissevered, and belligerent? The result is not doubtful. We shall not fail, if we stand firm. We shall not fail. Wise counsels may accelerate or mistakes delay, but sooner or later, the victory is sure to come. Um, yeah, and I, I think that, that that passage just speaks for itself. We really don't didn't need that extra bit of commentary from Kaplan. Um, because, you know, he says on the page uh, above and before that uh, that passage is very reminiscent of uh, Tennyson's Ulysses uh, and Shakespeare's speeches from Henry V, you know, in terms of just its rhetorical power. Um, and I would agree, uh, but I don't feel like I needed Kaplan to further explain it to me. Um, but what do you all think? Do you think I, I am being nitpicky, or do you think that that is a bit heavy-handed of Fred Kaplan? Um, I also think uh, that it's obvious which parts of this book Kaplan enjoyed writing, and, and which parts he just wrote to fill up the facts of Lincoln's life. Uh, the writing about Lincoln's campaigning, um, the wider political situation in the U.S., uh, Lincoln's personal life, uh, and other aspects of the book that basically don't relate to Lincoln's writing is just not as inspired as uh, Kaplan's writing on Lincoln's reading and writing life. Um, it's not bad, but it's just never quite as engaging, and I feel like it's probably just because Kaplan himself wasn't as interested in it, given that he's a literary biographer, not a not a uh, biogra not a political biographer. Uh, and that sort of leads me into another issue that I had with this book, which is that I don't think that this is the best place to start with learning about Lincoln's life. Uh, Kaplan definitely glosses over aspects of his life that don't relate closely to his writing, which means that you'll you'll learn only very superficially about um, things like his relationship with his wife Mary Todd, or about the Civil War, or what was going on in American history at the time. Um, I think it's fair to say that Kaplan probably assumes that the reader will already have read or is soon planning to read a full-dressed biography of Lincoln. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, it's, you know, but that being said, I had not done that, uh, and I'm not necessarily planning to do it in the near future. I do want to eventually, but not in the too near future. Um, this was my first experience learning about Lincoln in depth in any, in any way, aside from uh, Ken Burns' documentary on the Civil War. Uh, and I still feel like I learned a lot about him, and I don't think I was left in the dust at any point because of my ignorance of the details of his life. Uh, this book obviously does give you the broad strokes of his life, so it may be a decent primer on Lincoln's uh, life story, uh, even if it doesn't serve as a comprehensive study of him. Uh, so yeah, I mean, and obviously this book will have a lot that will appeal to uh, bookish people, uh, people on BookTube, because obviously there's a lot about Lincoln's reading and writing life. Um, so anyway, those are my thoughts on this book. Uh, I uh, would love to hear from all of you, though. I, I have a few uh, questions at the end that I want to ask uh, people to comment on if they so choose. Um, do you think that Abraham Lincoln has a place in the American literary canon? Uh, was he as great a writer as Kaplan argues he was? Um, should we read Lincoln's works for their own literary merit and not just as historical artifacts? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and. Um, Anyway, that's all. Uh, so thank you all for listening, I guess, not really watching. Uh, you're not watching, well, you're watching Lincoln's, this portrait of Lincoln. Um, anyway, thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a nice weekend, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.